Charter Local Edition. My name is Brad Pomerantz. We are coming to you from Grand Junction, Colorado. We, of course, are at the Club 20 Fall Meeting. It's my pleasure to introduce you to Diane Mitch Bush. She is a member of the Colorado House of Representatives. In your first term, first you term. came from local government, though, mm -hmm. so you know of government. Mm -hmm. Give us a sense of how that shift has been between local government to state government. I was a two-term Rock County Commissioner, and before that I served 10 years in the County Planning Commission. So I know land use issues, I know transportation, I know water, uh, and, and that's really helped me. County Commissioners tend to be focused on solutions right. and pulling people together, and that's what I've done as a state representative. I've worked across the aisle, I'm known for that, and I've pulled my stakeholders together in all my bills. At the same time, you now represent two counties, yeah. two large geographic counties, yeah. and you were showing me on a map that from the top of your district to the bottom of your district, it's a good four hour drive. Not that you necessarily take that drive all the right. time, but still, I mean, it's a big geography, presumably diverse interests, diverse uh, views. So how do you manage that? Well, the two counties have a lot of similarities and some differences. Sure. The similarities are, first and foremost, they're both headwaters counties, beautiful right. headwaters counties with large portions of land and public lands. Both have major world-class ski resorts. Both have excellent public education, K through 12, and Colorado Mountain College. Mm. And so those are great assets, as well as the two hospitals. We have regional airports in each county, which bring in flights from all over the country. Literally. Uh, literally. I mean, oh, literally. Oh, yeah, <laughs> literally. literally. Well, it's mm -hmm. Hayden. Our airport's okay. actually in Hayden. But mm -hmm. uh, the differences are, I think, I-70. I mean, Eagle County is, most of Eagle County, not all, is along I-70 strung out. There are 11 municipalities in Eagle County, most of them in the I-70 corridor, but some in the Roaring Fork corridor on Highway 82 near Aspen. Whereas in contrast, in Route County, there are four municipalities, and it's not quite so right. strung out and spread out. So let's talk about the I-70. Oh my, I mean, there's no doubt the I-70 is a source of contention, no matter where you are yep. in the great state of Colorado. Uh, a lot of discussions about trying to somehow ease the congestion. Yep. We know part of the challenge is that, of course, there's the Denver side, but people are trying to get to these beautiful ski resorts mm -hmm. And it can be virtually, it's, there's gridlock just getting to the beautiful ski resorts. And that's an economic driver for your communities and otherwise. So give us a sense of what we're seeing on that front. It's actually an economic driver for our entire state. Right. Uh, tourism is one of our top industries in Colorado. The Denver Metro Chamber just named the I-70 corridor congestion as one of the five top issues that they want to deal with this right. year. Ditto for CDOT. I've been trying to deal with these issues for a good 25 years in transportation policy in Northwest Colorado. There are bits and pieces as we move along, and we've only got time to talk about a few, so let me talk about one that I think is especially promising Please. that we're going to see a pilot for in 2015. And in transportation, everything's an acronym, so it's PPSL. Yes, I know That's PPSL. Peak Period Shoulder Lanes. What that means is that we'll reconfigure shoulder lanes going up to the Eisenhower Tunnel, uh, going west, and going east, of course, the other way. And during those peak periods, which are Fridays going west, right. uh, Sundays coming back east, we'll have a managed lane, meaning a toll lane. So if people want to go fast and stay in a steady stream, they can choose that lane. The whole highway, though, is not tolled, so it gives people choice. Right. But let's do talk about that, because obviously some see it as a panacea, some see it as class warfare. Because look, the toll lanes do cost money, and so could one argue that you're creating kind of a haves and have-nots when you create this toll lane in which one needs to compensate? I think not, and here's why. Uh, the billions of dollars that we lose when even one lane is closed, let alone all of I-70 uh, and the Eisenhower Johnson Memorial Tunnel, costs everybody, regardless of your occupation, regardless of your income level. In terms of the managed lane, again, it's a choice. The whole highway isn't tolled. So you can go faster, go less fast, and the toll lane will, s will actually speed up the untold lane. That's what I was going to say. Right. So Presum that's right. the key. And also getting people off and out of their cars. We also are going to be seeing a bus system, mm. uh, again a pilot, sure. uh, between Glenwood Springs and Denver Union Station. That will also get some cars off the road. Now, will the toll be operated by a private entity, public entity, public-private partnership? It, as far as I'm seeing so far, and I'm sorry, I don't know all the it's details, all and I should. It's, no, I it's should all good. Don't worry. Representative. Uh, but it will be a public-private partnership. Right. 
uh, the, and, and the CDOT, you know, kind of, right. you know, the public piece. And the reason I ask is, one would hope that at least some of the revenue from the toll could benefit the state generally. Yeah. Well, not generally, but it would benefit uh, those congestion issues. So the but money not, would not be... not the general fund. Right, so it would be dedicated towards transportation yeah. projects. Yeah. Now, the... Well, and in particular, I-70. A possible bigger question is the federal government. You know, so often transportation projects will receive funds from the feds. But we know at this stage the feds don't have a lot of money to give on transportation projects. There's a lot of discussion about whether the gas tax should be raised federally to fund transportation projects. I know, of course, you're a state representative. You're not but, in but, the Congress. But give us a sense yeah. of... Remember, we have a federal gas tax and a state gas yes. tax. They're both excise taxes. They're taxed on volume, not on sales price. Neither has been raised since the early 1990s right. at the federal level for political reasons there, at the state level right. for political reasons here. That is the major source of funding for CDOT. Uh, CDOT gets about 45% of its operating budget from federal monies. The majority of those, not all, the majority are from the federal gas tax. The remainder then comes from a combination of the state gas tax, which remember has stayed steady while construction costs have gone up. Uh, we, we then were lucky enough to get in 2009 the faster uh, funding advancements for a safer transportation mm -hmm. and economic recovery act and that's of course a fee-based uh, source of, of revenue mm -hmm. based on registration and that has helped a great deal with safety projects it's earmarked for safety projects and bridges uh, that said the Congress has not fully reauthorize the federal transportation <laughs> funding for some years. They keep doing the stopgap thing, this 30-day right. thing. And so uh, you, you don't have the kind of certainty you need. These are big projects. They're long-term projects. If you don't know you're going to have those federal funds, it can be very problematic. We at CDOT have been really lucky because we have great people. Don Hunt, the director, mm. is fabulous. All the region e regional engineers like Dave Eller in Region 3, which is Western Slope, mm -hmm. have done a great job. And all the way down to, you know, our plow drivers, all our maintenance people, they do a great job with the same dollar right. budget they had in the 90s. But is it time to push the Congress on that front, Democrat or Republican? I, I don't think we're going to have any luck there. Mm. Yes, I, of course it is, but I don't think we're going to have any luck. I think we, where we are going to have some luck is speaking openly to the people of Colorado and saying, look, we have a transportation funding crisis right. and help us figure out what to do. Do you want to raise the gas tax? Do you want to have a VMT or vehicle miles traveled right. kind of fee? Oregon and Iowa both have uh, experimental pilot uh, projects. Both have a large rural population. One of the problems with vehicle miles traveled is right. if you don't, if you don't uh, essentially fix it for rural drivers, they're automatically penalized because of their, what you were talking of about, course, my distance. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so there are, there are lots of moving pieces that I think we have to look at and deal with, but I think we need a public conversation. In our final moments, I want to speak with you about education. There's no doubt that Colorado got hammered during the recession yep. as it relates to the educational yep. system. Yep. Billion dollar cuts yep. year after year. This year though, Looking a little better, but yeah, yeah, a $500 yeah, million dollar spike, yeah, is that right? Yeah. Uh, 450 yeah. Okay, so okay. We'll, we'll average up, you know. Yeah. Well, you're a professor, so, <laughs> so is that a drop in the bucket, or yes. is it a welcome, well, no. okay. Again, if you think about the, the billion that was cut, the so-called negative right. factor during the recession, uh, we've now put on surface 450 million back, right. but be careful there. Not all of that goes in general um, to the districts for some of the things they had to cut. The cut was taken across right. the board. Uh, in uh, House Bill uh, 1298 and House Bill 1292 this year, uh, there were uh, some funds that were particularly uh, earmarked for, for certain mm -hmm. projects. Uh, nonetheless, that is an improvement. Our, our local school districts, mine, the Eagle Schools, right. I have five school districts sure. okay, in my district, have all seen uh, increased FTE, slightly smaller class sizes, all of which are good for kids. You'll come back when we come back? Her name is Diane Mitch Bush. She is a member of the Colorado House of Representatives. My name is Brad Pomerantz, and this is Charter Local Edition.